Okay, so we just finished up normal and then the last one split heats. So what is a silent heat? A silent heat is a normal heat that you don't see the outward signs that it's going on. The dog internally is having a normal heat cycle and can be bred that you try to decide the right day to, to AI, you're lost because you're not seeing anything going on. So this is a dog that, you know, looking at this progesterone level on the left, days on the right, day one would be first blood, you don't see it, but internal to the dog, the progesterone levels are slowly rising, at ovulate, it's a day five, they take a jump and then they start really climbing after ovulation about day, about day nine. Level of five, breeding the dog on a 15. All right, trouble is, so this is about day five, this is about day nine, ovulation. The problem is, is that all of this is going on inside the dog. And what you'd normally expect to see would be signs of blood, swelling of the back end, more and more blood, the starts to become lighter in color, the dog becomes more receptive towards female, towards males and gets bred. That's what you'd see on the outside. But guess what? The dog doesn't swell. The dog doesn't uh, um, drop any blood. And so you're likely gonna miss this. So what are the things that can let you know that a dog is in fact having a heat that you can't see, a silent heat? And the answer is the way the dog behaves, progesterone levels and, and vaginal cytology. Those are the weapons that you have to just decide what's going on. So let's talk about behavior. Just because the dog is not visually showing it doesn't mean the dog's not attractive to other dogs. It will be. It's still pumping out the pheromones that say to other dogs, hey, I'm getting to the point where I need to have a baby. Come help me, come help me. So the dog likely will show behavior towards other dogs, allow it maybe humping on other dogs, allowing other dogs to hump them, sniffing on the private parts of other dogs, showing interest in male dogs, allowing male dogs to sniff their rear end, and eventually allowing male dogs to get up on their back and mount them. Those would be the signs that give you a hint that there's something going on and you need to go take action if you want to breed this dog to know what to do next. Or if you don't want to breed the dog, make sure that it doesn't get in a situation where it's unfortunately bred to the dog you don't want. All right, so what can you do? Well, number one would be the old Q-tip test. Stick a Q-tip up inside. Some dogs are really clean, fastidious. Other dogs clean them up. And so all of the signs of the blood are disappear because they've been cleaned up by dogs. But the Q-tip up the vagina you know, about that far up and just to stick it in there, twirl around, pull it out. Look to see if there's any color. And if you're not sure about this, go do this on a dog that's not in heat and it'll come back, maybe a little bit of dirt on it, but it certainly will not be red. Versus a dog that's in heat and possibly a dog with a silent heat will show you some blood color, some pinkishness to it and that gives you an idea about what's going on. So that'll be the, you know, so behavior, maybe the Q-tip, that'll get you started on getting to the eye, realizing that you're in this fixed to be bread zone. <clears throat> so the next one is vaginal cytology. Vaginal cytology. Cytology. Big word for a simple process. What happens is, is the bleeding is caused by the fact that there's structural changes to the inside of the dog. And specifically the vaginal canal is sloughing off and those cells are changing from what's uh, from a, a different looking structure that you can detect with a swab. And that's by the way you see the blood coming on. So what you do is you take, and I've got videos on, on vaginal cytology, so I don't wanna spend a lot of time just describing in detail what you do here. But the basics of this is, is you take a Q-tip, you stick it up inside the dog, you twizzle around, you then take a microscope and you roll the tip of that, <clears throat> the tip of that, um, Q-tip onto the slide and it deposits some cells onto the slide. You then stain those and you can go get stains on Amazon to do this, diff stain, there's various different stains, but you stain it and then look at it through a microscope. And you can buy a microscope to do this for as little as a hundred bucks. Uh, I like a microscope that has a digital screen on it. It's much easier to look at. You can take pictures of it and you can show it to other people, about 400 bucks. And by the way, when we're talking about that, Celestron makes great, I think great uh, microscopes. They make cameras too, they make good lenses. But what you're gonna see when you do vaginal cytology, if you look at a dog that's at beginning stages of heat, the cells that you look at will look like fried eggs. Now you don't need a huge magnification of this, a couple hundred will more than get it done. But what you're gonna see is the cell itself, 
and in the center of the cell is a nucleus which you can see quite definitely as being a different you know as, as a, a dark matter in the middle everything's black and white when we do slides so you won't see purple but what you'll see is a, a clearer outline with a kind of delineation of the outline with a with a, with a dark area in the middle of it that is um, that's a uh, a dog that is not ready to be bred yet and what you will see is these cells progress along over the next week or so that they will then become what's called cornified. They will have fairly flat, when they're rolled out they look like cornflakes. There's no central area, they're the same contrast all the way through. They can curl up on themselves so they don't always look like this, but they're basically flat cells with no nucleus in the middle. And when they are 100% cornified, that's typically the time that you think that this dog is ready to be bred. So this is something you can very simply do without doing a progesterone test to find out whether a dog is, is not in heat or a dog is getting some of these and is close to being bred. And then when you get closer to 100%, you can then go do your first progesterone test and not spend a, 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 and find out exactly where you are. Um, okay, so let's see, that's silence. Um, and what numbers would you breed on? Well, it's the same thing. You're going to breed on 50 nanograms per milliliter for a vaginal, 25 nanograms for a, a, a surgical insemination or a TCI, transcervical insemination. This is for a regular AI or regular breeding. So same rules as far as numbers are concerned, but we're waiting to get to these numbers. The day before this, it would be an eight. So if you're going to have semen shipped in, when your dog gets to an aid, it's time to have it shipped. That's on an IDEX machine. Other machines read a little bit differently. Okay, so there we go. That is now uh, number three taken care of. Split eats, sun eats. Next one's going to be, we'll probably lump a few of these together in these next ones. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet, I'm not a licensed medical professional, I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Mm -hmm.